Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CSL Midtown this morning. Uh, I want to let you know that Reverend Dr. Bob is experiencing a little bit of a physical challenge this morning that prevents him from being with us today. And he is okay. There is no COVID stuff happening or anything crazy like that. Um, he is fine. And uh, I'm sure you know and affirm with me his perfect health and wholeness, and we know that for him. He will be back next week, and we have a wonderful guest speaker for us today who stepped in at the last minute. So we are so grateful and thankful, and we will um, introduce her later. It's Reverend Susan Zoller, who I think everybody knows except for me. I just met her this morning, so um, you all are familiar with her. Um, so I'm really just here to pretend like I know what goes on around here. Um, we all know Vance is really in charge, thank goodness. So. Um, thank you, Vance, for all your help. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy 4th of July weekend. Um, it's a brand new month. We have a new theme for us at CSL. This theme this month is Unchained Spirituality. It's all about the spiritual principle of freedom and different ways that we can approach that. And I don't know if you've seen on the website, we listed the topics for the whole month. And it's some pretty fun stuff that we're going to be talking about. So be sure you're coming back every week. As a center, we are so glad that you have joined us here today. I hope everyone feels very welcome. And even though we know we're going to be meeting online for quite a while, we are still a community. So even if you're here for the very first time, welcome, you are part of our community. Our spiritual center doesn't just tolerate people. We don't just accept people. We like to celebrate people, all people, because no matter who or what you are, we believe you're an expression of the divine. You are an expression of life. And we know that such is the nature of life, that all it asks is the opportunity to show up. You are that opportunity, and so am I, and so it is. Now we like to start off by covering our Declaration of Principles to sort of review who we are and what we're about. If you'd follow along with me. I believe in one God, one absolute power, and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love, and it creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative, and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life and the immortality of the individual soul forever unfolding. I believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. Well, we are very blessed today to have, like I said, a guest speaker who stepped in at the last minute. Um, that to me is just a national treasure when people can do that for us. Um, and like I said, I had only met her this morning. So we have Reverend Susan Zoller here. She is uh, formerly served as the minister of the CSL Center in Maui, Hawaii. She's now on staff at SLCA in Atlanta. She was originally a biology, chemistry, and physics teacher. So she credits her background in science as a major influence in understanding science of mind. Using science of mind principles changed her life in wonderful ways and influenced her to become a minister. So please welcome with me, Reverend Susan Zoller. Good morning. In July of 1988, a disastrous oil rig explosion occurred in the North Sea off the coast of Scotland. It was night, it was dark, and 166 crew members, along with two rescue workers, died. Only 63 people survived. Now, one of them was Andy Mokin. He was a supervisor, and his story is very interesting. He was asleep and abruptly awakened by the explosions having probably worked at least a 12-hour shift prior to going to bed, he was probably deeply asleep 
But nonetheless, here is what Andy did. He ran from his quarters to the edge of the rig. He, he might not have even had any clothes on. There's all men out there. And he jumped off the uh, rig and without hesitation, fell 150 feet into the rough and cold, tumultuous water of the North Sea. Andy clearly knew that without rescue, he could only last about 20 minutes in that water before hypothermia would set in and he would not be able to survive. Now, he knew he could strike the edge of the rig as he fell down. He knew that many things uh, could lead to a brutal death. Many things could have happened to Andy, but none of these did. And Andy jumped. When asked why he made that decision spontaneously that saved his life, his answer was simple. And this is what he said. It was jumper fry. It was jumper fry. So we know that Andy did not do this for personal gain or growth. He didn't do it out of confidence. He didn't do it because it seemed like a good idea. And he certainly didn't do it because it seemed challenging. And Andy Moken survived where 166 people did not. This is a man who lives by the principle of my talk today, which I entitled, Letting Go is Getting. Again, he just said, it was jump or fry. Andy's ability to size up the situation distinguished him from 166 other people who died. Certainly they had their reasons for not doing as he did. Surely some were paralyzed by fear. Others may have thought it was safer to stay. Some percentage probably thought it was their job to stay. But with regard to survival, it did not matter. They died. In a book called Management at the Speed of Change, Daryl Connor wrote about Andy's experience. Daryl Connor is an expert on dealing with change, and he uses what he terms the burning platform example uh, to teach how to effectively respond in a situation. He says that change only comes quite often when the cost of maintaining the status quo is simply too high and decisions made from a burning platform differ from others in that they have a great level of resolve. It is an imperative change for these people. It's in the face of danger or feeling of possible death that they make this change. Have you ever found yourself on a burning platform? I know I have, and on more than one occasion, and I'll share one example. In 1995, I was in the middle of moving to Maui, Hawaii to become minister of the CSL Center there, when unexpectedly, after quitting my job, selling my house and my car, packing up all my belongings, I was diagnosed with a malignancy that had gotten into my lymph nodes. What a dilemma, what do I do? Lots of people told me, don't go, you don't know the medical care there, you don't really know anyone, you've been only there for three or four days. Don't do this, it could be dangerous. And I thought about all of it, and I looked at it, I had meditated and prayed on it, and then I jumped and I moved to Maui. Here I am 25 years later, I have all my limbs, all my body parts, and I've lived to tell about it like Andy did. And you may be thinking, this is the 4th of July weekend, what does this have to do with the 4th of July? Uh, you know, 
But there are many people who believe that America is going down the tubes. They point out that we have jumped not into the frying pan, but straight into the fire. And they point out that we have very serious problems in our country today that are very challenging. There's racism, there's violence, there's, you know, all kinds of things going on, a pandemic, unemployment, a faltering economy, and the list goes on and on. What's a metaphysician to do? How do we handle what is going in the world around us without being overwhelmed? It, it is overwhelming to think about all the things that can go wrong. And that's not to say we deny what is happening in the world, we just know a greater truth. And saying we just know, it may be simple, but it may not be easy all the time. But here's what Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of Science of Mind or Religious Science said. You will need to enlarge your viewpoint, develop an eagerness to encounter new ideas, to evaluate them, and assimilate those you can best use and adapt for your purpose. Again, you will need to enlarge your viewpoint, have an eagerness for new ideas, and evaluate them. We weren't taught to leave our brains at the church door when we come in. We were taught to use them. But we're going to use them from a different place than the ego, the fear-based part of ourselves. I call this, letting go is getting. Now, in our teaching science of mind, a basic belief is that all thought is creative. And science teaches us that we send out waves of energy as we think and feel. And through what we understand of physics, it comes back to us as our experience. This isn't just a random thought or a one-time thought. This is the overall trend of our thought and the amount of emotion we have that is tied to those thoughts. So what the saying, all thought is creative means, is that if something in your life is less than desirable, we must change the thoughts, the beliefs, and the emotions that are attached to those thoughts to affect change. Now, when we declare ourselves, uh, which is a very spiritual, powerful thing to do, uh, we align ourselves with an idea, an action, a thought. And so what happens is that it can seem like everything in opposition to it comes up. And there are those who would say, well, it wasn't meant to be. I was being tested. I was being seen if I was worthy. There are many things we can say. But, you know, we're not being tested by God. God is not a big figure in the sky testing us and looking to see if we pass or fail, if we are worthy. Now, God or the divine intelligence that created everything, by whatever name called, is always responding to us by corresponding. In other words, what we're putting out comes back to us. It may not look like what we thought it was going to look like, but it does correspond to what we are thinking and feeling. Sometimes if we don't even realize we're thinking or feeling that. Now, when things get challenging, we can look at the circumstances as information, just information. And when we do that, we step back and become neutral and say, what's going on here? Taking away the emotion and the judgment, we can look at that situation and it offers us the opportunity to choose different thoughts. Every moment that we spend thinking and feeling is an opportunity, it is a way to affect change. It's how we define ourselves. And we're constantly defining ourselves by whatever we think, we do, we feel, we believe. 
certainly our actions are part of that. You know, there's no time in the mind of God or spirit. In the absolute, there is no time. There's only this moment. So no deity out there, no big human in the sky, or what I thought of when I was younger as a 50-foot man sitting on an uncomfortable gold throne. Uh, there's no God out there who's withholding from us or checking to see if we were good enough, you know, looking at our past actions to see if we really can have what we want to have. There is none of that. So we have the opportunity to redefine ourselves every moment because there is no past in the mind of God. There is simply the eternal now. If I change my thoughts right now, if I change my beliefs right now, then I change the experience I'm creating. It may not seem that this is happening instantaneously, but indeed it is happening. So we get to choose. So it's like if we don't like what the radio is putting out, if we get something that we do not care for, we don't pick up the radio and bang it on the table and say, bad radio, you just aren't good enough. If you were digital instead of analog, if you had better knobs or whatever else, I would be hearing what I want. That's not so. What do we do when what's coming out isn't what we like? We simply change the channel. In other words, if we change the frequency which we're vibrating by changing our thoughts and feelings, by changing our focus, by lifting our thoughts, then we change what's coming out of the radio. In other words, what's happening in our lives. We have a different broadcast. Now, a sign I have in my kitchen always reminds me of something. It says, faith makes things possible, but not necessarily easy. When I begin to consciously think and speak, when I affirm my desires, everything that was within me that was in opposition to me manifesting that which I claimed came up. It didn't mean things could never change. It simply meant, look at this, change what you're thinking and feeling here. Change your belief system. And I began to work with that. And I kept on and kept on. With the challenges at that moment didn't matter to me because I was so invested in creating a better life. You know, um, I wasn't being punished or taught a lesson. I was creating opportunities to create a new reality. Now, letting go of thoughts that were not in alignment with my desires made the space to create what my heart was calling out for. I had to change my mind and I had to keep it changed. Sometimes I had to change my thoughts and my direction multiple times in a day, sometimes in mere minutes or even seconds, because it became very obvious why things that were going on in my life were going on when I realized how much I had been affirming and claiming by thinking about what I did not want. In other words, I was arguing and calling in that which I did not want. So to create what I did want, I had to let go of what I didn't. Now to do so can be frightening because you know there's comfort in the familiar, even when the familiar is unhealthy. And stepping out in faith can feel like we're stepping out onto fog with no foundation. But stepping out in that uncertain place changed my life for the, for the better in wonderful ways I could not even imagine. We have to let go of what does not serve us in order to receive what does. You know, when this country was founded, Nothing was guaranteed. The colonies were far outnumbered by the British militia, and they certainly did not have the weaponry of that army. When the founders of the United States met to create our country, 
They knew what they were doing was high treason to the British, in which that equated to certain death. Now, those who signed the Declaration of Independence could be signing their death warrant, a painful, awful death. You know, they, they understood the consequences of their actions. Some wanted to remain British, to think that we could work it out and change it. Some believed that England could never be defeated. Yet there were those who hungered for and believed in freedom so strongly that they allowed their faith to carry them. And in the end, a greater ideal, <clears throat> excuse me, a greater ideal prevailed and the vote was unanimous to declare independence. If the vote had had one negative, one nay, they would not have declared. They had to let go of what they knew in order to create our democracy. Look what's happened, and here we are. You know, yes, there were challenges. There were hardships. But almost 250 years later, here we are. We're still standing. We're not perfect. By no means are we perfect. But we have perfect potential to create, to create that which we desire, to make a world that truly loves and accepts every part of it and strives to be greater and better. The issue is our nation are opportunities, they truly are, to lift ourselves up, to be better, to grow stronger, to be more compassionate, and to live more in faith. Our flaws and divisions allow us to redefine who and what we are thought by thought, actions by action, and emotion by emotion. Solutions do not, excuse me, situations do not define us. Our responses, our solutions do. So let's go back to July 1988. Handy's ability to let go of that oil rig in the night with explosions going on all around him distinguished him from all the people who died. Certainly the others had their reasons for not doing as he did. They could be fearful of getting into the North Sea. They can be treacherous. They might have thought it was safer to stay and they could handle the situation on the rig. Maybe they thought they should stay. They would be blamed if they left. Andy let go of all that in an instant. He did. Now, if you've ever seen an oil rig, they're very large, they're very strong. They can withstand hurricanes and, and horrific weather conditions. You know, it would seem that it was a very secure thing to do, to hold on there. You know, interestingly enough, sharks like them too, they throw all the excess food right over the side, and the sharks hang around the base and eat the food. If you jump over, they may just think of you as fast food also. But Andy had faith. Andy had a greater idea, just as you and I can have. Our country was created from deep desires to do and to be more, not from the need to be safe, or the need to compromise. The United States was a great idea in the mind of God, one that inspired people over time to lay their lives on the line to keep and create the freedoms that we have today. Made in the image and likeness of God, we have the means to live from knock and the door shall be opened Ask and it shall be given. We need not wait until we stand on a burning platform, whatever that platform may be for you or for me. We don't need to wait for that to step out. There are little fires that can eat at us daily, and it can feel like we die a little bit daily when we 
Stop having faith and believing we can do more, experience more, create more. We don't have to have that. We can choose to live life larger. You know, the sharks of life that are beneath whatever oil rig we choose as security, those sharks can keep us in fear. Interestingly enough, the most dangerous animal interaction known to humankind is with the common bee. More people die of bee stings and the shock that from them, the anaphylactic shock, than ever even see a shark. Few of us will visit an oil rig, and each of us will make decisions, seemingly large or small, and they determine the quality of our lives. Absolutely. Let us be guided by that soft voice within that speaks to us and calls to us. It is not the ego voice that says, I want this or I want that. It is so much more. We go into that place that knows and knows it knows. It is there. We simply have to quiet ourselves and listen to that. Spirit is always saying yes to the frequencies we broadcast through our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. So you and I need to choose our frequencies thoughtfully. What we broadcast matters. Spirit always says yes. We need to see what we're putting out there that is coming out of our radio of our lives. So in gratitude for those upon whose shoulders we stand, be it our country's founders, our families, the light bringers who stand out in everyday life, the people who are putting their lives on the line uh, in so many ways to keep us healthy, to keep us safe. From my heart, I thank you. We are blessed as creations of the Most High, so let us live accordingly and live in faith. We are of the Most High. Blessed be, amen, namaste, and so it is. So I invite you now to take a moment and close your eyes. Let these words that speak to you be absorbed. Just breathe. Feel the breath coming in and out of the body. In the yogic traditions, this is called pranayama, pranayama, the conscious cultivation of the life force. We are vitally alive. We were before we came into this physical body and we will continue to be always when we leave it. We don't have to know how to create something. That job is up to the infinite. What we have to do is be open to the inspiration and the opportunities that come to us to turn away from that which we do not desire, to release what can seem our security, to have something greater. So just breathe. the number of interactions going on in your body during each breath seem innumerable. There's so much that goes on. We don't have to control that or tell our heart to beat, our blood to carry oxygen, our, our digestive system to give us nourishment. It is done. It comes from a wisdom that we did not create, but that we are a part of. So simply breathe. 
Allow your shoulders to drop and be aware of your body. So let us take it day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment, and indeed, breath by breath. because we fulfill the promises that were made to us throughout the ages. We live from our spiritual knowing, not thinking, but knowing, and we create greater and more. What we see now is now. We go to the place that creates the reality, the physical reality that we experience. And we create greater and greater from there. The best is yet to be because we always are creating. And this is wonderful. And I am grateful. I'm grateful for each person who experiences this service today. I'm grateful for Reverend Bob and the people who are putting this on. I'm grateful for all those people who helped create the way, who paved our way. So in knowing this, I release it because it is in the law and it is coming back to us. It is wonderful and so it is. Amen. Ashe. Blessed be. Thank you for being here with me today. And a powerful message from Reverend Susan Zoller this morning. I'm going to do our affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance. Abundance. As I really enjoy. Thank you. I join in the divine flow. And all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly and, and so it is and so the link to do the donations is www.cslmidtown.org donate i am vance blue i am a board member of csl midtown and <clears throat> we are glad you're here there are so many different places you could be today and we are glad you're here and we appreciate all that we get to sustain during this time where we're doing our service online. It's um, pretty amazing uh, to have that ability. And we're gonna continue doing this for the foreseeable future. And um, so next Sunday, the theme is none are free until all are free. Reverend Bob Dean will be back with us then. Yeah. And um, during the week, we've got Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesday afternoons, 12 to 1230, Thursday evenings, 6 to 630. The same Zoom that you got on this meeting with is available uh, for a spiritual empowerment session. So if you've got anything going on during the week, you need to uplift. That's a great opportunity to do something during the week. Our new contribution system is up and running. Like I said, it's on there. It's real easy to use. And go on you can set up a ongoing regular contribution or just do one-time contributions with that system and it's really easy if you got anything going on in your life that you need help with we've got practitioners available to do that and there's actually a link on the website that you can get it's on the screen there that allows you www.cslmidtown.org and if you go to the home page and then click down on that it's the prayer treatment or that direct link that's in the in the chat there as well. Definitely, that's what we're here for, to learn, to think better, to know better, to have a better life. And with that, I'm going to return it back to Reverend Cynthia. Thanks, Vance. So one thing I want to point out to everyone, in case you missed it, I know it went out in the newsletter, it's on the website, I think we said it on Facebook, uh, Reverend Dr. Bob and the board have made the decision that we are going to continue doing services online for the end, through the end of the year at this point. 
Um, and I want to let everyone know that you're so important to us and your health is very important to us. And some centers in some places have started opening up and are following some great regulations. And we are just not willing to take that risk with anyone, even though we affirm your perfect health and of course know that to be true. At this point, um, we're gonna dive into these online services and um, we also welcome your feedback and your ideas for how we can make this even better. Um, so we wanna make sure you know that. And then we're gonna wrap up with our affirmation of life, which I was just glancing at and goes so well with this talk today. Thank you, Reverend Susan, for being here. And you're all on mute, so shout it loud and proud in your house, this affirmation of life. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. <laughs>